Growing up, Lila would be in the hospital probably four or five weeks a year, at least. I was always in the hospital, so I could. it was hard to do stuff like sports and stuff, and I couldn't do that because I couldn't get hit in the stomach, and that's like, if I get hit in the stomach, I'm gonna have that pain a lot more. When I'm in pain, right then and there, I can't do anything but lay there and take deep breaths. It's a terrible, like she turns into like a wiggle worm, like she just rides her, I mean, she would just push pressure. She has acute on chronic pancreatitis. So it's, uh, it's, it's relapsing acute pancreatitis. And in her case, it's hereditary. So she has a genetic mutation that predisposes her for these types of, of events. I met her when she was admitted with a very severe case of acute pancreatitis. She couldn't eat. She had a lot of fluid in her abdomen and the fluid was from all the pancreatic fluid that was leaking as her pancreas became uh, essentially fractured in the tail of her pancreas because of the acute inflammation, like a, like a grenade went off in her pancreas. So she was pretty sick and I introduced for the first time the idea of taking out part or, or all of her pancreas as, as a treatment. The major consideration in this particular case is that all that inflammation puts her at risk of, of cancer, of pancreas cancer. Hereditary pancreatitis actually has the highest lifetime risk of pancreatic cancer, which concerns me as a surgical oncologist. So it, it was really important, both in the short term and in the long term, to try and reduce her risk of having these serious bouts of, of relapsing pancreatitis. The preference was, in her case, to just do a, uh, a partial pancreatectomy or a half pancreatectomy uh, and take out that disease portion, the part that really leaked and was responsible for all the fluid that was draining. The process of violet transplantation is, is that we remove the pancreas, we send it to the lab, they mince it up, they enrich the cell population with hormone producing cells, and then deposit them in a bag, an IV bag, and then we infuse those cells back into Lila. Those islet cells can take two to three months to really kick into gear. And she was already pre-diabetic as most chronic pancreatitics are because the of the disease of the organ not working so well. So the likely scenario is that over a long period of time she would eventually progress to um, to a full diabetic and this was a way to delay that as long as possible. So very important that we have that capability. Since the procedure, it's my stomach has been hurting. I've had no pain to my pancreas. The healing has been good. I've healed well. I healed super fast. I'm still healing, but like I I was out of the hospital in three days after. She's back to probably being better than how she was before, even though she has to take her insulin and everything with her everywhere. It's still better than having to worry about that pain coming out of nowhere. Without UH, Lila would never have had a hope of a pain-free future. I'm hopeful that she will have the same quality of life as somebody without this disease.